That's awesome. So now as a coach now, um, how important do you think it is for athletes to play these multiple sports? Like, is there a certain age mm -hmm. where they should stop? Or do you suggest they play for as long as they can um, go, uh, play those multiple sports for as long as they can? Yeah, like, um, I'd say play as many sports for as long as you can. Hands down, that'd be okay. my opinion. Um, I'd avoid specialization until absolutely necessary. Like I said, if it's manageable and enjoyable still, like, why? Um, yeah. And I'd say, like, try as many sports as you can. Like, get a, like, a diverse variety and try and do so, like, before your teen years. There's a lot that says, like, if you try them out earlier, um, there's a lot of benefits that'll happen, like, later down. Um, but, yeah, like, I don't know. Coaches always tell me, like, when I'm playing basketball, they can see that I'm a rugby player and vice versa. When I'm playing rugby, they, like, see my basketball skills. And <laughs> I think that's what really helped me. Like, even when I started rugby in grade nine, um, they instantly like saw that like your field vision your coordination your whatever um it just helps you transition that much smoother um but yeah like being as a coach is definitely fun um hearing or like seeing athletes roll up that you like know that they're like a basketball player a hockey player like yeah. i love how i must have made other coaches feel like down the road when they like heard that i'm a basketball player like now i have that same enjoyment when i'm like Ooh, right. who are we getting? Like, I don't care that they've never touched a rugby ball. Like, if they have that, like, foundation yeah. that they've already been playing sports for X amount of years, like, the sport-specific yeah. skills, like, that's fine. We can work with that, especially rugby. Like, it's pretty common for athletes to not have seen or touched or passed or anything with the rugby ball. But, like, <laughs> we can work with that. Like, once you hear that they've been – they're an athlete and are playing other sports, like, I love to hear that. And I'm never going to tell them not to play another sport regardless how good they are at rugby if I see a future. Like, keep playing your other sports like I hope you do and um yeah I definitely wouldn't tell them or advise them ever to uh hang up their boots in one to transition to another that's cool yeah. spoken like a true athlete true coach <laughs> <laughs> um you know given you pretty much almost just dropped basketball right yeah like, pretty much until... for the past four years completely yeah. <laughs> so i'm interested i'm very very interested to hear how that went um obviously you you you've done enough and you made an, a, a big enough impact to and uh, to prove yourself as a multi-sport athlete to even get that offer so um anyways for the viewers here uh tuning in um your live's actually popular right now we're getting a lot of people coming on so <laughs> good for you um <laughs> For, oh, actually, if you didn't know either, you're actually the first um, young woman guest that we've had so far. I actually just noticed it today. I was thinking about, like, mm -hmm. all the guests that we've had on the show, and they've been all, like, my – either my friends or coaches of, of mine and, you know, just given my background in basketball, I'm always around guys. So um, it was really cool that, that I got to uh, kind of um, bring you on and, you know, have you, especially, one, as a Brantford athlete mm – -hmm. Um, and just secondly, as someone that's not only an athlete, but someone that is a, what I consider a successful athlete that to come out of Brantford, um, not all of us are, 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 are as lucky as, you know, you and I were growing up and yeah, it's awesome to have you. So thank you for being on the show. For those thank you. Lucky, yeah, for sure. And here. people that don't know you, um, give us a quick introduction. Who's Maddie Cahoon? Okay, well, um, I'm 21. I am from Brantford, graduated from St. John's uh, more recently, just graduated from McMaster. I played four years of varsity rugby there. So I'd say most of my successes, well, most recently have been in rugby. So obviously playing varsity, did U18 Canada, um, 15s, and then U16, U18, U20 Ontario, um, dabbled with some sevens as well. And then now I'm getting into some coaching. Um, so at BCI, as well as Hillfield Strathallen College. Um, but as for basketball career, I'm transitioning uh, over to basketball, like you mentioned, um, as I pursue my teacher's college certificate. So yeah, basketball, fell in love with the game with CYO. Uh, then in grade nine, I transitioned to Hamilton Transway, and then later to the prep leagues in KW for the probably uh, dual prep. Unreal. So, yeah. Unreal. You, you, you must have put your parents through a lot of driving there. Uh, yeah, luckily, one other Brantford athlete kind of did that transition with me, Raquel Balden. Um, so oh, luckily we had Mr. a little Baldwin's... bit of... Oh, my yeah, God. A little I'm bit that of carpool old. going. Yeah, but... you're right. You're right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was fortunate for us. Uh, at least it was 50% and not a full 100%. But... Yeah. Yeah, definitely a lot. So definitely grateful for that.
That's really cool. That's really cool. I mean, I feel like that's the story of any major Brantford athlete is just having to travel out of town. And part of the reason why I started what I did is because of that reason there is just trying to provide something local. So, you know, it helps cut the, cut the cost of having to travel for the additional stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. So, that's huge. Yeah. So it's, yeah, definitely, definitely having fun doing it. But, you know, um, for you though, um, we went to the same high school, but I believe I graduated, I'm, yeah, I graduated a bit earlier than you. I'm not even going to front with that. <laughs> um, what year did you graduate St. John's and how was your playing experience there? Like, did you love basketball more over there or rugby or was there a different sport that we don't know about? Ooh. Um, yeah, so I definitely chose St. John's coming from St. Bernard's, like a small Catholic elementary school. Um, but not just because of staying in the Catholic system, but also because of basketball. Uh, basketball is my number one sport growing up. And there's kind of that like legacy um, built from like the older girls that we all went and watched. So uh, yeah. I don't know, the era of the Katie Polish Chuck, the uh, Kayla Santilli. Um, they had their 10 year anniversary. Van Lewin, Kelly Van Lewin. Season, eh? Literally. So Crazy. I came a few years after that. So I think we are like CYO team, like really looked up to them. And then our whole CYO team kind of came to, well, stuck together. And we all went to the same high school. So we kind of just like kept that chemistry together. And then yeah, won four Bixas, uh, four Kwasas and two offset silvers. Um, so I played, I played three years senior. So I was fortunate that way. Um, nice. to get a little bit more experience um was that because of grade 13 or you played senior in grade 10 i moved up in grade 10 nice. yeah um with uh kendra van lewin so we had two youngings um and we moved up that year um but yeah we were like a super small team so it was actually like a big uh for most of my time at st john's yeah. we just kind of played like hard and fast and uh yeah. like got the job done but yeah i think it was like honestly like so much fun like most memorable four years of basketball for sure Right. And you were playing rugby for St. John's as well? Yeah, that was my first year being introduced to rugby. So I didn't start rugby until grade nine. Oh, shoot. Yeah. So that's kind of why I was like very tunnel vision. I want to go play uni ball. That was my goal. And then rugby came around in high school. My dad told me to go try out. Like, I feel like how every girl starts <laughs> rugby in grade nine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> went out and like fell in love. And then, yeah, pretty much that's played. Awesome full year every year after that so uh, was, mul was playing multiple sports was that something you were doing all your life or was that only in high school mm, yeah so I was pretty fortunate that my parents like gave me the opportunity to try a lot of sports like growing up so um I think the first sport I tried was I almost did this but I didn't uh dance um so yeah we did I did dance and a little bit of gymnastics a little bit of figure skating emphasis on the little bit um, but mostly soccer and basketball. I feel like that's pretty basic. But yeah, soccer and basketball until um, about grade six. And then it was kind of becoming really overwhelming trying to play both of them full year sports. So it no longer was like the whole basketball half like in the winter and then soccer in the summer. Like it became, if you want to play basketball, like you're doing summer leagues, you're going to the States, you're doing tournaments, you're yeah, trying to be seen, time. right? Yeah. yeah. So then it became that stage. So then I kind of... Uh, well, I decided to quit soccer and then I just focused on basketball, but full year. Um, and then, yeah, when I went to high school, then I went back to trying to play every sport that I physically could. Um, yeah. So like badminton, cross country, track, uh, basketball, and then rugby. Obviously, even to this day, your dad is a very popular teacher, like all across, you know, Brantford in general, um, especially in the sports world. How big of an influence did he play like in your playing career? And did he have a favorite sport for you? Or does he have a favorite sport for you? Well, I bet you he's tuning in. So his head's probably growing just hearing you say that. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I mean, I think he loved everything I played. Maybe when I was wearing more blue or not when I was wearing green and white. I think he wishes I was in blue and gold for BCI more. Uh, yeah. But that aside, um, he coached most of my basketball teams until I like moved out of town. Um, but, like, we've always just had, like, that natural connection due to, like, our mutual love for sport and then the right. same sports at that. So, yeah, like, I just always remember, like, we'd be, like, at the dinner table and we'd be, like, going through plays with, like, salt and pepper shakers. And then nice. uh, introduced to rugby, we'd, like, play in our living room, like, on our hands and knees, like, full-on tackle, kind of. <laughs> um, like, awesome. yeah, it's always been, like, sports has, like, been a part of, like, our family for sure forever. 
but like favorite sport uh I think his heart lies with rugby so I'm gonna have to say that that's gonna be his favorite sport to watch me play right. um and I know was how he a big rugby he player too did, did he play rugby yeah like, was yeah he played yeah he played pretty high like he played Ontario um wow. I would say he probably should have played Canada but it wasn't I don't know like as big as a thing there and yeah. um he also found it later he played uni though like he did play at Waterloo uh originally thought he was gonna play football but played uh rugby um so yeah and then obviously still loves Harlequins if you know him at all so um still bleeding uh red out there but yeah he yeah, played actually... until 40 maybe 45 and then tore his bicep and that was like probably the last strike of like 45 10. Yeah, I want to say, yeah, it was uh, my grade nine year. So that's five years. Yep. Wow. Actually older than that, I think. Yeah. Wow. So. Um, now for those parents and players of multi-sport athletes out there, um, when is the right time? And I say, quote, unquote, right time. <laughs> you said you dropped soccer in, at grade six, right? Mm -hmm. So Correct. what's your, what would you say the right time is, in, a, in your opinion, to specialize in one sport? Um, I say it like depends and it's going to be like different depending on the athlete. Like, um, as long as multiple sports are manageable and still enjoyable, then I say keep on playing them and keep reaping, reaping in like the benefits of as many as you can. Um, I don't know. I think there's just so many benefits of it. Like you're avoiding burnout. Like I know when you're playing one sport full year nonstop, it's pretty likely that you are going to burn out eventually. Playing multiple sports helps like avoid that. Um, mm -hmm. Cross training. Obviously, there's so many benefits with skills, uh, different muscles that you're working uh, mobility, like you name it, just makes you a better all around athlete, um, yes. reduces the risk of injuries. Like, I mean, I got no stats on that, but I mean, it sounds <laughs> like it would like, I don't know. You're not going to be like deficits in certain things. I don't yes. know. Hey, but, before like, that though, your, your injuries, you know, for the people that are, are listening to your answer there, I seen the pictures that your injuries are more of like, you just got cut. Like it's not, <laughs> It's not because you, 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 you hit a cut the wrong way, but it's because you actually got hit and your, your body got literally opened up. So I wouldn't say that's, that, that's necessarily the, the injury that we're talking about that we're reducing the risk Thank of. Thank you. Yeah. So, like, that's what I like to hear. Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely a little reckless with my body, but like, yeah, depending on the lighting, I mean, you probably see these, whatever, 12 stitches in my forehead or these in my chin. <laughs> I don't know how many stitches are on my face, but yeah, um, yeah a couple of root canals, like, I mean, it happens, but yeah, definitely still rooting for multiple sports. I don't know. Yeah. Like it just keeps opportunities open. Like obviously for me, uh, it's kept doors open for me to further my education while still playing sports. Um, I think obviously a huge part is like the social group. So like playing multiple sports just opens your like uh, social group, like world up. Um, so yeah. Like I think that's a huge part, part of why I keep playing like sports is obviously the social, but then yeah, like the life skills, like, um, I think there's just so many and obviously when you're playing multiple like the time management the commitment levels like responsibility that you're taking on by balancing all of that like that's huge and like to an employer to anything like in the real world like that's huge to say that you were able to balance all that and excel um, at that as well like I think that's pretty sweet for sure uh, I, I totally agree with you there um, it's just there's, there's just so much about sports in general to carry over as an adult and I know you're you're still like not a full fledged adult given you're still in school and everything, but I'm sure you understand just the feeling of having to manage, you know, your both your athletic career and your schooling career. On top of that, your social life and, and like you said, the sports helps bring you that pool of people that also mm -hmm. understand what you're going through, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I can't go out every weekend because I got my, I got practice or I got to do my extra work, right? Or yeah, I, exactly. I have to do my schoolwork because I didn't do it all week because mm -hmm. of plays and or because of my, my, my games and my, my practices. So exactly. Yeah, totally, that. totally, totally great answer there. Um, now, when it comes to you, like, how did you transition? I, I think I think you opened it up for me here. How did you get into Redeemer with a basketball mm -hmm. offer? You know, you just played yeah you rugby for what four or five years yeah four yeah right at mac and then let's give in nobody has film of you of playing basketball for those four or five years right okay I thought or so. at all right <laughs> so so how did, how did that happen you got to let me know how that transpired yeah so basically i've always known that i wanted to be a teacher um so okay. i was looking at teachers colleges thinking about where i want to go uh but basically i decided that i wanted to live at home or live at least close to home but 
more likely I wanted to live at home. So the closest um, teacher's college was Redeemer. Um, so I was like, okay, that looks, that looks pretty good. Small little school. Like, I don't need the whole, like, university environment anymore. I just want to, like, get my certificate, get done. Yeah. Um, so then I was looking into their sports, of course, natural transition for me. And then realized they didn't have rugby because it's such a small school, but they have basketball, soccer, volleyball, and cross country. So I was yeah. like, okay, out of all those, basketball it is. Basketball. So <laughs> I only have one year of eligibility left with youth sport as a female. You only get five years. Um, okay. I'm hoping maybe COVID might help me out a little bit. And without there right. being a youth sport or uh, OCAA championship, maybe I'll be able to get a year and a half this year. Sneaking, yeah. Maybe. Um, but yeah, basically, I just like reached out to the coach myself. And I was like, hey, like, I'm hoping to come in fall 2020. Um, this is my rugby um, career. This is what I've been doing for the past four years. However, um, I did play basketball at a like a decent level. Like, um, I will definitely be rusty. Like I was very like, blunt. I'm not gonna lie. And yeah. I was like, no, but good. like, uh, this is what I did do in basketball four years ago. But um, if given the opportunity, like I'd love to like get like meet or like come to a tryout or whatever. Right. Um, so yeah, basically he replied like right away. It was super nice, like so welcoming um, and just said like, yeah, we're actually having a training camp um, in a couple weeks. You should come. And I'm like, oh, and I emailed like a long time ago. And he was like, um, yeah, like come anyways. And I was like, okay, sure. So I literally got rid of all my basketball clothes. Like I don't own a pair of basketball shorts. Like all my shorts are like, well, not basketball short length. I'll just say that. Yeah. yeah like yeah. have a couple reversibles. I'll say rugby. Like definitely <laughs> looks like a, like an, a NARP, like going to this tryout. Didn't have basketball shoes. Had to ask uh, one of my players I coached rugby um, oh, for basketball funny. shoes. Anyway, so I go and then, yeah, basically, yeah, that was it. He, they were pretty impressed, I guess. And yeah, like offered me a spot right then and there. And wow. we've stayed in contact since. And yeah, so it was a good two hours for me. Um, they definitely commented on my grit. I was definitely playing basketball, a little rugby like, um, yeah. which I always have. So hard nose defense, rebounds. Yeah, like yeah. So yeah, they're just like commenting on my heart. They're like, yeah, you're rusty. I'm like, yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> but like, they're like, obviously that's coachable and like that's fixable. We got time. Like, let's see what we can do. So. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to uh, see how that goes. Yeah, I've been getting shots up, obviously, with this free time. So that's right. been beneficial for me, um, getting my love back for the game a little bit. But uh, Hey, when you're yeah. in Brantford, if you want, you know, if, if you need the lines, my, my court's open for you. I'll just, uh, you got to find time. And, and we'll, we'll get you I would love to. Could you use sure. it. Now, being a part of that RBC training ground mm -hmm. program, um, you you hit me up and and offered that to to the athletes that I work mm -hmm. with. I hope I'm not quite sure who went from Brantford. I hope you got a handful. Um, what advice would you give for those athletes that are on the fence between mm -hmm. the two to three sports that they are currently playing, or if they're super, they they think they're super into one sport, but they're starting to like they they tried out one sport that their friends you know maybe let them let them play with them like touch football or, or tackle yeah, football yeah. one time you know what kind of advice would you tell those people that are on the fence between you know sports um yeah so to start like that rbc training ground program was basically like an opportunity that rbc has created to find and fund um athletes that they see could have like olympic potential so they basically just ran combines um, all around the nation. So I just kind of was an ambassador for that. Um, but what was neat about that and why that relates to this is just the fact that um, basically they believe that athletes with any sporting background have the potential to play any other sport. So I think it's neat to say like, yeah, you may uh, be a rugby player, um, but you may be an elite level bobslayer, but you just don't know it yet. So just because right. you've been growing up uh, being an athlete, uh, work on your endurance, your strength, your power, whatever, um, that might mean that you could be at the next level in another sport. So just by playing a, like any sport, like that's just opening up so many windows. Like I know that there's examples of um, like soccer players becoming uh, cyclists at the Olympics just because Shout of out. their endurance. Like there's just so many stories about athletes just because of um, their physical abilities. They're able to use that foundation and then teach them like sport specific skills. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd say, like, there's no point ever crossing off 
any sport just because you might not be at the next level it's still teaching you so many um skills and uh athletic literacy whatever um that could help you and just i don't know there's no fault in playing the sport so why cut those strings early yeah now building off that actually you just reminded me in university when i was um you know playing basketball the track and field team was actually actively recruiting within our basketball team because of you know um, vertical is probably is a big one so yeah they got a lot of our high flyers and tried to train them as high jumpers and they actually ended up getting like a oh they had full basketball scholarship so i don't know what the arrangement was but they actually ended up doing high jump for for our team or for the the track and field team or long jump uh we had a couple sprinters as well uh so yeah anybody here watching um uh, track and field is a great way to, to cross over and hill how did you get into hill field um a good friend um has a good friend and then i started working there in the summers so i did their summer camps so i was supposed to do this summer but obviously uh they're not running um yes. but yeah like i want to get into teaching and was looking in the independent school board system as well so um yeah i've just like really enjoyed volunteering out there first i did some refereeing for their tournaments and then uh, one thing led to another and I just put my hand up to coach as well. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like, you don't say no to anything and it's just, uh, brings, like... I'm not good at saying no. It's a uh, wow. blessing and a curse, I guess, but yeah. yeah. Uh, now, you know, oh given gosh. the, um, the basketball the commitments of Redeemer, um, and your whole background with rugby, you speak so, so highly mm -hmm. and so lovingly about those two sports. Is there another sport that would have your heart if you didn't have these two? Mm. I mean, I think there's always things that I wish I did, but maybe things that I wish I did younger. Like you mentioned track and field, and that's always been something that was like, man, I wish I did that younger. Like I feel like I would have those benefits of just like my um, like technique and stuff. Like I think yeah. there's some sports I just I wish I had that little bit of foundation. Like I've already said that like, when I have kids, they're doing track and field. Like hands yeah. down like I just like the sprinting technique like yeah I'm working on it yeah. now and have been for years but like I think when you start it younger like there's definitely a big difference than starting it when you're already in that habit and have been sprinting and running for how yeah. many years um but no like I think bass and rugby are definitely my top two and always okay. will be one opposed to the other is a little tough I think depending on when you asked me in my life, they would be a different answer. <laughs> yes. um, I think, yeah, basketball had my heart literally till grade 11 and then cracked the candor roster and was seeing some more uh, perks with rugby. And I think that just kind of had me in like a woo stage and uh, just kept with it. But like, I wish I could have done dual in university. Um, I thought about it, but also That's wanting harder. the university experience of, well, A, academics is important. So, yeah. like, to be able to yeah. pass university playing two sports would probably oh, be yeah. a good idea. Um, but then, like, a social life and then sleep and, like, everything, yeah. like, it would be hard. So, um, yeah. I don't know how people do it. Good for them, the few that can. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, like, I think if I ever had to choose, I would still choose rugby. But I do love that I – well, I'm not that old. But, like, that I can still switch over to basketball and feel like I can still play for many more years. Like, I don't know how many years my body will allow me to play rugby. I think I still yeah. have quite a few left. But uh, I don't know. I think rugby is still going to have my heart despite my switch to basketball for the next couple of years. But I think that's huge for all the young people, like, that's tuning in now or, or tuning in in the mm -hmm. future. Um, just for someone um, like you to say that. Now, you, you're, not, you're not shying about your age, but <laughs> you're, you said you're 21 now, right? Yeah. So 21 years old, um, that just leaves a lot of room for you young people out there to, to still go out, go out and get after it. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess we could say you're at least playing until you're 22, 23. Yeah. Right. So, you know, for those of you that are, you know, 13, 14 year olds questioning yourselves, there's a lot of room. There's still a lot of, you know, one year can change it. I'm sure you know about this, like from whether it's people that you've played with or, or you yourself mm -hmm. during your, your journey one year can really be a difference maker for for your career and your confidence so especially for the long off season covid oh, awesome. a long off season so i think that's there's players some are uh, some shocks in the new year for sure yeah so now talking about the young people here what advice would you give a high school athlete that is good at a lot of sports but they're not great mm -hmm. enough to succeed at the next level for one um, of them? 
Yeah, that's fair. Like, I think playing at the next level has been something that, like, I'll always cherish, cherish and I'm still cherishing. So I think, like, even if you're on the fence and you're still kind of in that uh, environment, like, try to get to that level because I think it's going to be so worth it. Um, but if not, then I'd say there's no fault in trying. Like, if you're going off to college or university for uh, school for academic purposes, um, email a coach, attend an open trial. Like, you don't want to ever have that, like, what if? Like, what if I went, like, what would have happened, right? Like, I don't think uh, yeah. that's ever something you want to live with. And even if, in, if that means you're a part of a team as a manager or as a practice player, um, I've always been someone who just values being a part of a team. So whatever level or uh, contributions you may be able to make, I think that's like definitely something that's worth it. Um, yeah. But if not even that, then I just say keep playing. Like play at any level, like uh, beer league, pickup, like intramurals, <laughs> like you name it, like just keep yeah. playing. Like. I don't know, keep your love for sport alive, find a way to play, find friends, find anywhere. Um, yeah, just keep it, keep it going. There's a lot of people saying hi. What's up, everybody? Um, I think I would Miss touch Link, I'll probably mess it up. I can't, I can't not, not call you Miss Link because <laughs> you're, you're a teacher and I just, I grew up, you know, Mr. and Mrs. My friend's last name. I got a, I got a it's the same thing with, with coaches. Uh, All right. Yeah. Uh, Miss Link. So she said that uh, based on your dad's genetics, you have a lot of years left of, uh, of rugby. So <laughs> uh, Marcus, hopefully. what's up, Mark? That's your brother, right? Yeah. He's still in BCI? Yeah. Well, graduated now, graduated. I guess, or in the next graduated. few days. Yes. Uh, Marcus, congratulations. Congratulations. Sorry. <laughs> um, and thank you for tuning in. I appreciate that. Uh, we are colleagues. I'm not. No, no, no. no I, don't, I don't consider myself as a colleague. Uh, when you are all, you know, you are my, I guess, veterans, and I grew up with that too. Like, I don't know how how big uh, seniority is in university here, but um, in the Philippines, as soon as you touch down, it's like you're bowing to the seniors. You're, you know, it's just. Thank you. All right. So speed round. So in one sentence or one or two words, you got to answer these real quick. All right. Okay. Cool. Do you think athletes become more successful in one sport if they play multiple sports growing up? Yes, they absolutely should keep playing sports for as long as they can in multiple sports at that. Awesome. In your opinion, does working out in multiple ways, uh, aka training in CrossFit, doing yoga, conventional lifting, plyometric training, etc., does that count as being a multi-sport athlete when you still only compete in one sport? Mm, I would say no. I think there's okay. difference between sports specific skills and then um, off the court things. I think when you're playing sports, there's things that you're doing con to contribute to your sport. Um, but that's not a sport in and of itself. But I think it's just benefiting your sport. Great answer. Okay. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm like, I asked myself that a few years ago. That's like, I'm on the fence with that one. Yeah, it is a tough one. Like, I'm, I wouldn't like, uh, go head to head with someone over it. I think I could compromise. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, especially like if like we talked about with the university recruitment or like you played and, and did mm -hmm. track and field, like that technically already makes you a multi-sport athlete, right? Yeah. All right. Does playing one sport seriously while playing house league for another sport count as being a multi-sport athlete in your opinion? Yeah, I'd say absolutely. I don't think cool. uh, at times it's manageable to play uh, multiple sports at an equivalent level. So I think um, sometimes that's what we have to do is sacrifice the level of competition in order to continue playing and enjoying multiple sports cool i know you received a lot of injuries through your career which one is your favorite battle wound or battle scar oh definitely my forehead um got some pretty sweet videos um my friends like, pretty sweet yeah, and uh wound. well i i try to keep playing with it probably the air try to glue it three times i think and oh. go back out so i just kept uh making it a bit worse but then um yeah like showered had dinner and then went to emerge and then uh yeah my friends came with me and um yeah took like videos of it like up close and personal like a little cringy for sure but i think it's pretty sweet um but yeah it was pretty funny like the guy who stitched me up didn't even want to do it he was like i think you need to go i was in nova scotia so he's like i think you need to go to halifax this is like too deep like it was like it would be equivalent to like us going to like a saint george emerge or something like it was like the right. small little town but uh my friend Taylor just commented, save the eyebrow. Yeah, he wanted to <laughs> shave it, but she stopped him. Because I was so like, yeah, do whatever you need to do. And he was like, uh, no, you cannot <laughs> shave her eyebrow. 
That's so yeah, kudos funny. to her because uh, it would be a little uglier today if it wasn't uh, for her. <laughs> so SJC versus McMaster, where have you made your best sports memories in your opinion? I mean, it's definitely more fresh at Mac, so I'm going to have to say Mac, but I think um, those obviously wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for St. John's. So I think um, there's just a difference between like foundational and then like, I don't know, next level. Obviously, we had some fun times, uh, post games and weekends out at uni. But I think uh, for high school, like that was a tight net group, too. I loved both for sure. All right. What about your favorite moment playing in Brantford? Ooh, basketball? Uh, man, just favorite play favorite sports moment in Brantford. Is it Offset? <sighs> well, Offset wasn't in Brantford. I was playing for St. John's. Well, technically, like, I, like you're, that's your Brantford team, though. Okay, then, so yeah. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely Offset. We, I wish we, I could say we won gold, but didn't. So, two Offset Silvers hurts a little bit, but it was obviously still, like, great games. Um, Crazy. I actually didn't play in one of them because I broke my finger in uh, Kawasa. Um, of course you did. Uh, a girl broke it, actually. Oh. Like, literally grabbed it and broke it. Yeah, so pretty – it was a long process after that. You know, some letters sent, yada, yada. So a little devastating. Yeah, wow. and that was after I split my chin a week before, a couple weeks before. It was a – rough season but uh Damn. yeah so we would face st mary's from hamilton in the final uh every year so um i mean bittersweet because they were my girls as i played hamilton transway so i mean oh, i knew yeah. the girls and uh we were pretty close but also rivals at the same time depending on the time of the year um yeah. but yeah offsa was an experience every year and i luckily got to experience that three times so i can only dream it like, I never, I never got there. I got to Kawasa, but we never did too well in Kawasa. Yeah, the girls yeah just... who, you guys would see the Guelph, the Waterloos. The... Yeah. Yeah. St. John's female women's basketball is just, there There was just something. Like, that era. That it was like, an era. I mean, BCI like a, is coming like in now. But... Best achievement so far as a player since you're not done playing yet. Hmm. Um, I think I've always kind of valued like when I win an award that's not just for athletics, but being like, uh, like well rounded. So I think, I think also because we talked about, it, but the Ed O'Leary was pretty uh, awesome to win, obviously because of his legacy, but then also just being recognized for being a student and athlete, not just for one sport, but for volunteering and uh, like all that kind of stuff. So I think, yeah, I was kind of proud to win something like that. Um, being all opposed around. to just an MVP or a, yeah. I don't know, most coachable or something. Like, those are always great, and I always feel um, really proud when I win those. But when you win something that recognizes a vaster um, set of things, I think that for sure. Sweet. Um, best achievement as a coach, if you have one already? Whether that's um, a achievement well, I mean, I can't like say a... I've been a part of it all, but at BCI, I can't remember how many. Maybe someone will comment uh, how many times <laughs> they've won Vixa. Uh, right. But I mean, last year we won it, so that just carried on the streak. And um, obviously, a little bit torn leaving St. John's to go to BCI. But I mean, it's been a great uh, group of girls to work with. I'm disappointed. Were you there when Megan got hurt? <sighs> no, she. I didn't get to coach her. Uh, um, she was on the sidelines with me a lot of the time. Still uh, came out to support, but um, no. Uh, yeah, that, um, that, that hurt me. Yeah. It, I, I saw her running, though, on the trail a couple times during uh, yeah. this time. So happy exactly. to see her moving again. We're back sure. to training, too. So I'm, yeah. I'm excited. Whenever her comeback season is, I'm, I'm excited Can't to wait. see her back on the court. Likewise. Likewise. Many people are, I'm sure. All right. So uh, do you see yourself coming back to Brantford for good in the future? I know you're out and about everywhere. <laughs> um, I'm sure you were kind of like me growing up, where I was like, oh, once I leave Brantford, I'm gone for good. Um <laughs> But, you know, we always come back, especially the ones that have been so involved, whether that was through school or sports, whatever it may be. Do you see yourself coming back for good and, you know, eventually raising your family here? Yeah, I honestly have always said that I like Brantford. In high school, everyone would chirp it and have we have nothing to do. Bad restaurants, no, like, <laughs> I don't know, entertainment stuff, whatever. We're but, coming like, up, I, though. I genuinely, like, loved it. Like, the trails, the people, like, I <laughs> love how... Well, love hate like, when I go out I know I'm gonna see someone I know so I mean I always want to try and look somewhat presentable but at the same time I love how everybody knows everyone 
um great yeah. community everything but yeah like i see myself like in this like circle like i don't know brantford ancaster cambridge like somewhere within there um see myself working in that area i could definitely not do toronto uh traffic congestion all that i'm definitely more of a smaller city girl um yeah. and yeah i just i'm not ready to leave that's where my family is that's where everyone um I really like care about is so yeah that's home all right so last question what is in store for maddie cahoon's future uh well uh teachers college i need to get that done so that's a two-year program and then yeah i'm obviously hoping to get a job as soon as i can but i think first i want to travel a little bit uh check that off my list i've always said i want to do like australia new zealand um go there that's a trip that takes a little bit of time so want to yeah. start that before I have like real life like we've been quoting so yeah, yeah I want to check that off and then yeah I don't know like I think I want to be teaching something like phys ed um following in some footsteps for sure but uh yeah, that's that. that's my passion do lots of coaching um yeah. would like to keep playing I think I'll obviously play basketball for the next couple of years then probably switch back to some rugby and probably some pickup ball because I'll be loving both at the same time yeah. um but yeah, and we'll just uh, keep riding that out, I think. Yeah. Hey, well, from uh, from one young parent to another y person that is still young and not a parent, <laughs> take your time with that stuff. That's like, if I can give you one person <laughs> place from, you know, from my side of things, I love my kid, but I also know <laughs> how different, you know, with basketball, my life could have could have shaped out. Mm -hmm. and I have no regrets at all. But at the same time, everything that you were saying Tough to do with a, with a little baby, so. Yeah, we'll tag along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but hey, um, again, I appreciate you coming on. Um, the whole Miss Link and Kahoon family, they, they're showing a lot of love out here on the chat. Uh, made it real active. Um, again, can't thank you enough for, for coming on and sharing your words of wisdom. Um, I didn't even know half the things about you, and you are one of the most successful people to come out of Brantford um, at the moment. Mm -hmm. So it's always nice to have, you know, our local people come on and, and share their story and just make sure that these are the types of people, inspiring people that we have in our local community. So, again, thank you so much for being on. Um, if you have any final words, you know, um, I guess leave your Instagram tag, uh, final shout outs, anything you want to say. And uh, the floor is yours. No, well, thanks for having me. I mean, I love following you and seeing everything that you're doing for Brantford and the Brantford athletes. I know that's something I would have loved growing up in Brantford to have that uh, basically my backyard. Um, so yeah, I think it's pretty great to see the athletes that are coming from your program. I see your gear being repped all across Brantford and I don't know, it's just really exciting to see and see uh, everything that you're doing and putting in. And I think good things are going to come. So I'm excited to see the athletes that come out of Brantford next and the athletes that get a coach next and yeah everything like that yeah i didn't even think about it like that but hey <laughs> i appreciate that i love it i love it